Have you ever had problems printing small parts? Maybe you lose the parts inside of the build powder. Maybe they just get lost on the floor. Or even worse, when you go to vacuum up your build area, the vacuum might have eaten them, never to be seen again. Well, in today's video, we're going to talk about how to cage components so that never has to happen. My name is Mark Dolinar. I'm an applications engineer here with Hawkridge Systems. And today we're going to be talking about the cage tool found inside of the HP SmartStream Build Manager. Now, in my particular screen, you'll see that I'm working with my 580 printer. And I have a series of very small gears actually found in the very bottom of my build bed. Now, typically, if I were to go and print this right now, it's very easy to lose these very small parts inside of the powder. And on occasion, I've actually vacuumed them up and sucked them away, never to be seen again. You definitely don't want that to happen. And worst of all, reprinting parts is terrible. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of material. Now, there is a way to stop that directly inside of the build manager. And we'll take a look at how to do that. For this, I'm actually going to position all of my components that I would like to group together into a cage in the build orientation that I would like them to appear in. And this is critical. Before you cage the components, make sure that they're in the right orientation. The cage tool itself does not compress the components around, it's merely making a cage where the components lie on your build bed. Now, in my case, I have all the gears already positioned in the exact orientation that I would like them to print. The next step is actually going to the right hand side of your screen and you'll see a cage icon. This actually allows you to start creating and establishing the cage that you'll use in order to encase these components. The great thing about using the build manager is you can make multiple different cages if you have different series of components that you would like to have grouped together. Now, if you would like this, you can actually rename each of the cages. So as you're positioning these components throughout your build manager, they'll all be linked together, making it that much easier to understand what components are where. Next up, you'll actually see four dialog boxes that allow you to adjust some of the parameters for the cage that we're about to build. Now, these parameters are actually quite important, and they depend a lot on the size of the components that you're trying to cage together. The very first one you'll see is the thickness. The thickness itself is actually going to be how deep your cage will go inwards. Now, in general, the thicker the cage, the more strong it is and the less chance of it actually breaking apart when you go to grab it and you go to bead blast it. But in general, if you have a very thick cage for very small components, it makes it very difficult to break the cage open and retrieve the components inside. So always keep this in proportion with your parts. The next option you'll see is bar width. Bar width is independent of thickness. The bar width is actually going to allow you to determine how wide those segments are between each of the gaps. Now this is extremely important and something to keep in mind with thermal capabilities. If you see the build area right now, it will have the potential of trapping in a lot of heat and you risk actually having thermal bleed on your parts. So in general, make sure you have some sort of spacing inside to let heat out and you don't want to trap too much heat directly inside of your middle of your print. The third option you'll see is grid size. Grid size is actually going to be the spacing between each of the openings of your cage. In general, you'll want this to be slightly smaller than the actual size of your components so that they don't accidentally fall through. And then finally, cage padding is going to be the distance between the inside wall of your cage and the inside out or the inside outermost face of your part. Now in general all these parameters are going to be dependent on the size of your components and you'll see them right here I actually have very small gears so for my thickness my bar width values they're actually going to be quite narrow these are actually the default parameters that uh HP Build Manager automatically spits out, and they should work okay for our settings. Grid size is one you always want to keep an eye on. What I usually do is just take a look at the part and double check to make sure that the grid size itself is at least smaller than two of the dimensions for your part so it doesn't accidentally fall through. And then finally, the case cage padding will be set to whatever the distance you would like. 
Um, in general, five millimeters is the recommended minimum distance between parts. That's what we'll run with right here. The last thing to do before you actually establish a cage is to select the components. This can be done directly from the graphics window or by holding the shift key down and selecting the top components you would like to have established inside this cage. From here, all that's left to do is hit create and the build manager will automatically create this cage for you. Now, one caveat to that, the cage itself will be established wherever those components are now positioned. My gears were actually flush against the base of the build bed. And that's why I'm getting this red arrow saying that the parts are no longer within the build region. That's okay. All we have to do is actually move that new cage upwards so that it's resting directly on the build bed itself. Now I have all of my small components positioned very easily for me to find, grab, clean, throw it in a bead blaster, and then break them apart once it's done and continue on with my day. I hope you liked this video and please make sure to like and subscribe to the Hawkridge Systems YouTube channel for more educational content such as this.